Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie and it's another Thursday. And thank you so much for watching Just Angie. You're really encouraging me and I'm so excited about it. And today's the 10th day of January. Number 110 stands for testimony. So I pray that you're going to have a testimony. But when I was thinking about that, about 10 being a number of the testimony, I felt to talk about God calls. And I love this Bible. Hey, you guys did a really good job in this Bible. The Africa Study Bible is amazing. So I want to read from Matthew, I think 4 from 18, it says, One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon also called Peter and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. And Jesus called out to them, Come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. And I'll read a little bit here. It says that when fishing, fishing is a thriving industry in most African countries, and fishermen spend the whole night in their wooden boats, catching fish from the lake, rivers, and oceans. To the fisherman, his boat is his priceless possession. His life secure as long as he has his boat. Imagine asking a fisherman to give up his boat, his means of supporting his family, to follow a traveling preacher. It would be an unthinkable request to the fisherman. And he says here, people who are truly called by God do not waste their time looking at what is left behind. They willingly give up everything to follow Jesus. And I wanted to bring a different angle. There's a time in purpose and calling. We all thought that we have to leave our jobs in order to go and to be, to, to, to be in the church and to fulfill purpose there. But I want to bring a twist to this story. Yes, God is calling to us to leave things behind, but the first thing is to do with self. It, I, there are very few people who God, like I think for me, calls, asks you to leave your job, very few. Because even if we look at the picture of Christ, he came into the marketplace and that's where he did his ministry. He didn't go into the church or the, or the, or the, or the synagogue to do his ministry. He chose men and then he did ministry with them, but there were people in the marketplace. So I'm feeling like, God is not called. Every time we hear the word calling, people think, hey, maybe people are asking me to quit my job. No, he's not. But what is he even in this season as we start the year? Is he asking you to leave behind? And I wanted to bring it even to a, 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 a very personal place. Is it um, diet? Is it um, he wants you to exercise? Is it that he wants you to be more patient? Is he want you to be, to be more diligent with your finances? Does he want you to really focus on this job and say, okay, this is my job. Maybe I'm an HR practitioner or I'm, I'm into strategy or I'm a strategic leader, but there's another angle, a God angle purpose into this job that he wants you to start to think about. That's what I want you to start thinking about. Not that God, in this one was drastic. They left everything and followed him. And you could be out there and God is asking you to leave and follow him. But I'm talking about what things is God asking us as we are on the 10th day of January to leave behind, you know, stop dragging it into the next year, you know? Is it habits that we have? Is it lifestyles that we have? Is it choices that we make that are not reflecting well on us, you know? Um, if maybe we if every Wednesday we go out and have a drink, so Thursday you're not operating at your best, is that something God is saying? Leave that habit behind for the year that's coming forth. Is it that you're always arguing with your spouse? Is it that you always argue with your boss? You're always the one who has something to say. Why can't there be a change? Why can't there be something that you leave behind so that you follow God's calling? And you see, God's calling is processed. That's another thing people forget. It's processed. It takes a long time. It could be maybe in 10, 20 years, maybe God is calling you to do something. He's, but but he's, he's going to process you through that 10 or 20 years. If you told me one day that I would be sitting here doing just, I didn't, just Angie videos, it, I would have said impossible. It had not even crossed my mind. It had not crossed my vision. It was not in my plan. What was my plan? I felt when he was calling me to transform people by the things that I was learning. Very simple. To transform people by the things I was learning. To share with people. To grow them. To empower and equip them. But look at what it has turned out to be. You know, but when I look back to my first day, actually in two, in two days I'm going to be celebrating. Um, actually, no. It, on the 7th, I celebrated 12 years of ministry. I, I didn't know how it was going to look like. So I'm feeling like on this 10th day of January, I feel like there's a tug in your heart. There's a calling that God wants to start preparing you for. It's like I am even feel like when athletes prepare as well, they, they prepare their bodies for a long time to maybe do only one race, one 400 meter dash. Can you imagine? But they have prepared maybe a whole year, two years, being diligent, you know. I remember once meeting, I think it was Paul Tergat, and I was saying he even made me tired with his, uh, he, he, with his uh, testimony because he was telling me that he, I think he runs 
15 kilometers every day when he's not even training. And I think 30 every day when he's in training. I was really tired. 15 every day. And I even asked him, I said, are there days when you feel like I'm not getting out of this bed? And he said, yes. But he's motivated to run. You know, just to share something funny in terms of knowing whether it's attached to quality. But I'm always saying, you know, that the reason Kenyan athletes always win or even African athletes is that, you know, the, the Caucasian, this is a hobby. For the African, what? And the crossing this line means dash. Uh, uh, please, money is landing. Houses need to be built. Children need to be go to school. He's running for a very, his motivation is very different. It's very hard to beat that man. He's motivated to run and to put all his strength in it and to cross over on that finish line. So it's January, but I feel like God is already talking about December. How are we going to cross the year? Are we going to finish well? Are we going to be, be strong? And another thing is that everybody in January joins a gym. The gyms are full in January. Full. Full us. But in March, we know who are the true true believers, who, who is really going to stay. And I want to challenge you to be that person who stays. You know, and the other thing that helps is to do things in bite-sized pieces. Don't do things, don't say grand things, you know. Like for me, and my struggle continues for the bread issue, but now I've come to, I'll eat bread once a week. You know, there's a plan. So I'm trying to say, whatever it is that you need to do, divide the goal into something manageable so that we can fulfill the calling of God on our lives. You know, some of us, we want to be around, you know, we, we don't want to have more purpose than body. We need the body to be here plus purpose and we're moving in that calling. And you know, if you're young, especially if you're young, I, I wish, I wish I was young and somebody was telling me these things, take care of your body now. You know, sometimes we feel like if we eat the chips, we eat what, they, they, it, there's no effect. Our metabolism is working. One day, those kind of decisions are going to catch up with you. So eat well, eat healthy, eat right, so that you can be able to live a better life. You're stronger and you're wiser and you're able to live more and to fulfill the calling of God on your life. I think the other thing I wanted to say is in terms of calling, because these people are called, but God, in this type of calling, what I'm feeling is God is asking us to leave something behind. So just choose one thing. Don't choose 10 things. Say this month of January, on this 10th day, this is the one thing I'm willing to leave behind. And if it's a craving that you have, then say, I will do it less. So either I'll do it once a week or I'll do it once a month. Or if I'm really good for four weeks, then this will be my treat for, for one day. Try to do that. Leaving behind, if it's the office, there's an attitude, you know, that you have. There's a, maybe when everybody has labeled you something, leave that labeling behind and try to be somebody who is different. If you're always the one who has an opinion, maybe this time sit and look at the opinions of others. If you're the one who, I, I don't like this as well, people come and they, they're given, they say, oh, that was a really good job, well done, and they single out an individual, be the one who says this was a team effort. Be the one who, when you says, this is this happened in a team. And I, I, I also feel like saying to somebody out there, open your eyes around to the people around you. Because sometimes are such, some, some of us are, are great leaders, we're influencers, but we don't even see the people who are around us, who are helping us to execute the vision that we have. What, 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 what can we do about that? And as I close in terms of calling, there's an organization that you're working in. I almost said planted in. You know, there's an organization that you're working in. Do you know the vision of that organization? How can we carry it forward? How can you improve things there in terms of being in line with the vision? Because vision is given for a reason. I remember once going for a training somewhere. I won't talk, say the organization. It was quite a long time ago, but I, I, I asked them about their vision. They didn't know. I asked them the foundation and how the organization started. And it's a top, one of the top four, top three or four brands in this nation. They didn't know. You know, make it your business to know. Why am I working here? So the things I feel like align, everything aligns. Why am I working here? Do we have the same vision? Do we have the same values? If I don't, where is it that I want to be? And then you make a plan to be able to get there. So today was about calling, a calling in the marketplace. Nobody's calling you out of your work, but, but I feel God is calling you out of your comfort zone. God is calling us to have something different about us. God is calling us to leave something behind that's not going to serve his purposes moving forward. And if you join the gym, stay in the gym. Stay there. And one thing you can do is make it consistent and, or, and, and not every day. So I always tell people when you've gone into the, oh, I'm going to be going to the gym more, do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Do it alternative days and rest in between those days. And then start with small, start with 30 minutes and then progress it to 45 minutes or to an hour as you move. For me, I get bored very quickly with, with exercise. If, it, if exercise was the only issue, me, I'd be top 100. My problem is diet. It's what I put in my mouth. That's not what I'm trying to figure out. But 
if it is exercise, so I'll go to the gym once, I'll do swimming. I have to keep changing it every two, three months because I get bored. I'll go walking, I'll have a, a personal trainer before I finish him and kill him in my house. But we are there, you know, concerning every day. And a personal trainer is good because you just roll your eyes because he has to appear. So you have to do your exercise. It, it, it creates discipline. So I hope I've helped you. But remember, there's a calling. God is calling us to something. You're being processed through it. It's not the end picture. It's what is happening now. What do you need to do now so that we build slowly towards that calling and that purpose that God is asking us to do. And remember, we must finish. We must start well, but we must finish well. So the plan, it's for the whole long haul. When, when it's January 10th, but by the end of the year, you have to be still be consistent and still following through. God bless you. Bye.